The UF-IFAS Mid-Career International Travel Awards provide funding to strengthen the programs of our faculty and graduate students by fostering new international collaborations on projects with global impact. Let's explore a few of these projects. A student of mine, Cassia Camilla, and I went to South America and we were there to facilitate her research for me to meet some colleagues and specifically to fill some knowledge gaps in the reproductive ecology, the six tubercled Amazon river turtle. We were wanting to, to answer the question, do females lay more than one clutch of eggs in a season? That will help us to have a better idea of how many turtles are in the population. What we were able to do was collect a single egg from more than 200 nests, take the eggshells, isolate DNA from them, uh, amplify those DNA using polymerase chain reaction, and then run analyses to be able to attribute each of those eggs to a particular female. And we will know that if egg one and egg 72 have the same molecular DNA signature, then we can say, hey, the same female laid both those eggs, and we can estimate population size based on nest counts. Turtles are long-lived, they're slow to mature, uh, and they've declined in the preserve. They're one of the species that has not really bounced back yet, so they would be a good indicator of success, of sustainable use of a, of a resource. Here at the University of Florida, I teach a, a couple of classes where the information I, I gain during this trip, this first-hand knowledge, is going to come in really handy. I can't come up with a case study, you know, based on reading of the literature, but this gives me that immersion, and that really translates well into making me more, uh, a more effective teacher. We went to the Netherlands to promote sorghum as a sustainable crop that Europe can benefit from. I was uh, accompanied by a graduate student, uh, Alejandra Avril. We went to Wageningen University, one of the top-ranked uh, agricultural universities in the world, and we were able to use some of the specialized equipment for our own uh, experiments. By visiting uh, Wageningen University with their interest in, in sorghum but limited expertise, We've been able to contribute our expertise with the crop to jumpstart uh, their program. We shipped seeds ahead of time that they planted in the greenhouse. And while we were there, we were able to show them how to make crosses with the sorghum plants uh, for genetic experiments that can be conducted in the future. Good scientists are creative and open to new approaches and by visiting uh, other scientists in other places, especially in other countries, you get a different perspective on research and on how challenges are met. And, and that's very stimulating for uh, developing new creative solutions. Stromatolites look like rocks, but they're living ecosystems made by microbes. These are the oldest ecosystems on the planet. So by understanding how stromatolites form today, gives us insight into how life originated on the planet 3.7 billion years ago. I think the goal is really understanding the system in case something happens like sea level rise, it gets to the point where their conservation is not an option. 
we were able to take small cores of a stromatolite uh, head and we placed it in a solution called RNA later, which helps preserve the nucleic acids at that moment in time. So it's like taking a snapshot, a molecular snapshot of all the genes that are being expressed at that moment in time. And we can kind of capture the microenvironment that existed around the, that sample and literally put it in a freezer and take it back to the lab. We're coordinating our activities with a geologist and a geochemist. By integrating all these multidisciplinary fields, we really can provide a holistic view of how, in our case, stromatolites interact and, and respond to their environment and to environmental change. And then in turn, maybe how those ecosystems are altering their environment around them. I hope that we can really get an understanding of how life came to be on this planet and how we might develop new tools to cope with environmental change and how organisms are going to deal with a changing environment. I went to Kyungbuk University in Daegu, South Korea, and we went to visit Dr. In Jung Lee. He is a plant physiologist with expertise in plant hormone metabolism. My research program is focused on the environmental impacts of cropping systems, and one of the projects we've been working on lately is a field project where we look at diversity in root system architecture and how that affects uh, fertilizer nitrogen uptake and water uptake in cropping systems. Right now, most global cropping systems only take up 40% on average of the fertilizer nitrogen that's applied. In this collaboration with Dr. Lee, uh, his expertise should help us to better understand how these root system architectures affect uh, uptake of, of nutrients and water in cropping systems. And so ultimately, we hope this will lead to the need for less fertilizer inputs by growers and less irrigation use by growers. As you think about this globally, this technology could be employed across the world and could help to, to improve efficiency and uptake of, of cropping systems everywhere. By doing these international experiences, I think it helps enhance the international reputation of IFAS.